guess it depends very much on how we define development. So I will take the minimum definition of development, namely the satisfaction of basic needs for everybody. So let me just limit myself to that with some remarks on it. And you see, this is what the Millennium Development Goals are about. It's not called a fight against a war against poverty or something like that. That's a ridiculous expression. It's just development goals. And they are set for 2015 and they don't have the slightest chance. The economic structure being what it is. And yet it can be done. And I'll just give examples. And then I'll ask the question, then why isn't it done and it can be done? And those reasons are not necessarily economic. So let me take one, let me take literacy. Literacy is terribly important because without literacy people are not members of the symbolic community. They may call themselves citizens of the country, but they're not really in it. They're just observing it from the outside. So how do you make a population literate in maximum one year? And you have an illiteracy bordering on half of 50%. Answer. By sending the officers, and sometimes also the sub-officers of the army, into the villages to run the schools. And you simply commandeer them the way you would have done in army service. Or you take the students off one year from the university, and you delegate one student to each illiterate family in the country. And you have the result within one year. You may need some pedagogical supervision, you may need somebody traveling from place to place, but that's easily organized. Now, this was done by Saddam Hussein in Iraq with the officers and by Fidel Castro through his education minister, Armando Hart, in the beginning of the Cuban Revolution. And it has a acid effect. Everybody in Cuba is different. So, if it can be done that easily, why isn't it done? And that could take health as another example. Imagine a network of <coughs> simple polyclinics with barefoot doctors and nurses. Knowing enough so that they know what they don't know. Equipped with generic medicine and simple treatment of a common flu, of a broken leg, of a trauma from a vessel that had been overboiling. Simple things. They know how to handle. And for the more complex things, you have state-of-the-art hospitals, a couple of places in the country, and helicopters. Helicopters sound expensive, but not impossible. You wouldn't need that many. But you need a service to call them, and that today is provided by the fantastic cell phones all over the world. So imagine you do that, what would stand in the way? What stands in the way? is that people high up may not like people low down to come up. A, because they are afraid that when they come up, they will treat them, the people high up, as badly as the people high up treated them when they were low down. They are afraid of revenge. And they can't even think in terms of parity and equity and equality. They think in terms of dominion and revenge. And some of them practice it against women who are coming up, who are so-called apathy, to the point of killing. Now, second point, they might like people low down, that can be exploited as cheap labor. And the moment they are in good health and are well educated, at least to the point of being able to read and write, they will not be able to exploit them so easily. For instance, they might read certain rules called human rights, and that might make them even more apathy. So what I'm saying is that we have wonderful goals that can be realized and the things standing in the way are mainly social. So for good politics you have to address these problems and you have to train the people high up by not only accepting the people who are coming up but being happy about it.